One of the common things that patients are surprised by when I'm chatting with them about the possibility that they might have mold illness or mold toxicity is that even if the mold exposure was from you know months or years prior to uh, the the date that they're coming to see me, um, they're, they're surprised to hear that the that past mold exposure might be contributing to their current present day symptoms. Um, this happened recently with a patient that I saw for the first time and <clears throat> she's having a, a myriad of symptoms going on, um, a lot of fatigue and joint pain, uh, a lot of sinus symptoms, a lot of headaches, um, and she had this major, major mold exposure maybe five or six years ago and she was surprised to hear, oh, this is something that might be causing me problems now, like how is that possible? Um, and so we talked about how uh, when there's a particularly notable mold exposure, it's possible that the mold can actually colonize the sinuses during that exposure time and that the sinuses essentially become a mold incubator and the patient's walking around with mold in their sinuses wherever they go moving forward until it's treated properly or the immune system is able to kick it to the curb. So um, I, it's something that a number of my patients have been surprised to hear about before and I start bringing it up and I can see the look in their eye. They're like, oh, I think Dr. Ray, you know, maybe didn't you know, eat enough lunch or didn't get enough sleep last night because he clearly didn't hear that I had that mold exposure five years ago and my symptoms started, you know, three years ago or, um, you know, I had the exposure before. Maybe my symptoms started around the same time, but um, clearly I've been out of that moldy uh, home or that moldy job, like workplace or whatever for a while. So how could that possibly be an issue? Um, in many of those cases, actually, where the patient is surprised, um, the reason I bring up the mold is because the timeline fits really well. It's like, oh, I've had X, Y, or Z symptoms for the last five years. Oh, about seven years um, ago, I started working in this environment and, you know, there's some water damage. And, you know, within the time I was working there, these symptoms started. And so I'm oftentimes the first one to point out that timeline of like, oh yeah, that is interesting that my symptoms started during a mold exposure and then, you know, got worse after that subsequent tick bite or whatever it was. So again, just a reminder that the timeline is sometimes a little bit counterintuitive, but um, if, there's an, if there's an adequate degree of mold exposure and the sinuses are susceptible um, due to different factors that might be suppressing the immune system, or if they're just particularly aggressive mold mycotoxins, particularly mycophenolic acid, which is produced by penicillium species mold, which is a very strong immunosuppressant. It's actually used as an immunosuppressant drug um, that is prescribed for you know uh, tr uh, folks who have had organ transplants or um, I actually had one patient with really severe autoimmune disease who was prescribed mycophenolic acid. It's not very common here in Canada, but anyways, it's a it's it's a immunosuppressant drug. So if there's aggressive enough um, immunosuppressive mycotoxins, then that might be enough to create a window of opportunity for that mold to colonize the sinuses and then patient might not have those mold related symptoms until years later or they might not get notably worse until years later when other things are afoot. So uh, I hope this video content was of interest. If you have any questions or comments about this topic or anything else just post in the comment section below and I will answer as soon as I'm able to.